I fell in love with two different guys on the internet. How much money in total have you sent him? Thousands? Oh my god. 20,000? More. 30? More. 40? Nice! Oh my gosh, that's so colorful! So he's an actual person too, but mm -hmm. he, his name is Raven, and the, right. but you think his name is James. Yeah. Where have you been sleeping right now? You just find a random spot on the street. Yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna be interviewed right now. I'll call you in a while. I couldn't help but wonder who was on that phone. Was she still talking to the scammers? It was a rainy morning in Los Angeles, and for some reason, the first thing on my mind that morning was Cindy. Where was she? Was she safe and covered from the rain? You know, I hadn't had communication with her in a month or so, and every message that I sent was not answered or read. I was worried about her. I went through the most recent correspondence I had with her to try to find some sort of clue as to where I could find her. Thankfully, there was something. Once the rain cleared, I headed to Plummer Park, trying to manifest that I would see her. You know, she is such a big phone person that her lack of correspondence was a major red flag that I just couldn't shake from my mind. All right, Cindy, are you here? At the park, I looked everywhere. But there was no Cindy. How are you? I am looking for someone and she is homeless, but she lives she's at this park a lot. I don't know if you've seen her recently. We can't get a hold of her. You haven't seen her? <sighs> okay. I still haven't been able to find Cindy. I've went looking for her a couple times, but I can't get a hold of her and I don't know where she's at. <sighs> I'm scared for her. I became obsessed with finding her. Even my friends were now invested in my search. Everywhere I went, I had an eye out for Cindy. I sent her message after message, hoping that she would somehow read them and know that someone is out there who cares about her. It was Thanksgiving day and I went back to the park, hoping to see her and make sure she wasn't alone for the holiday. I walked past the tennis courts where families paid doubles. The park, where I saw moms and their newborns playing on the playground, but there was no Cindy. Hello, I have a question for you. Do you recognize her at all? She said she's here a lot, but I haven't heard from her in a while. I was looking around for her. You haven't seen her? Not this part. Okay, okay, thank you. I even walked past the area where I noticed most of the homeless slept, but no trace of her. The search had seemed like it was hopeless. I walked back to my car defeated and deeply concerned. Just as I was about to pull away, I noticed a maintenance man and I felt some sort of urge to ask him if he had recognized her. Hello, I have a question for you. Have you seen this lady around here? She's homeless, but she said she, she's bright blonde wig, very theatrical looking. Yeah, I know, but no, not right now. You haven't, seen her, you haven't seen her recently? Before, yeah, but uh, no, no. What? No, not today, no. Not today? No. Okay, like how long ago did you see her? Do you remember? I know, yeah, two, three days ago. Two, three days ago? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, okay, but thank you. I know. You know but who she is? Place, yeah. Where does she normally stay when she's here? Like what part of the park? Do you Walking know? Walking in the corner right there. Okay, okay, thank you so much. But uh, you know, the, yeah. I'm just looking but for no, her. Not today. Okay, okay, yeah. I'll come back. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Happy okay. Thanksgiving, thank you. Okay, well, we're onto something. I feel hope. More determined than ever now to find Cindy. Suddenly, I saw a Facebook status from her. Oh my god. She's okay. Okay. Cindy's okay. Oh my god. I'm so happy right now. Okay. After corresponding with her a bit through Messenger, she gave me an address of a homeless shelter in Glendale. I hopped in my car and headed to see her, anxious for an update on her life, and so happy that it seemed that she was now safe in a shelter. Cindy? Oh my gosh, you look different. Yeah. Good to see you. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you, thank you. Of course. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. Aww, thank it's you. been so long. I'm glad you're safe and everything's good. I'm trying so hard. Yes. So you, that's this is where you're living? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm so happy that you're right here. Really? Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> She got in my car and we headed back to central Los Angeles. Yeah, I feel like your hair is like such a thing for you. Yeah, it it's kind of a gender affirming. It is, it is. I was thinking because it's Christmas time, I wanted to get you something. Mm. And 
you know, I wish I could get you an apartment, but obviously oh I can't God. afford that. Mm. So I was thinking we could go to a wig shop. Oh my God, really? Yeah. I would love out, that. And I you could pick that. out a wig. I'll get a blonde one. Oh, I'd love that. Okay, oh perfect. God. Are you excited? Yes. Oh my God, yes. Okay, perfect. I, 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 there's a perfect place that I think we should go to and maybe we could try some on. And you could pick out the perfect right. one you like. All right. And it'll be fun. Oh my god, how cool. Yes, I love that, man. Oh my god. Yeah? <laughs> Can I tell you how I feel right now? Oh, good. I'm so happy. I, I knew you'd be happy. So I was like, this is going to be great for her. What? You have this in other colors or just the one I'm seeing? We have a different color. All right. She likes blonde, right? Yeah, do you have this in blonde or this one here? She likes long and blonde. Like this kind of style, but blonde, you know, if you have any like that. Is this too short? That's too short. Oh, whatever you like. If you like it, go for it. Here's I think it's, number one. I think it's pretty, but I think that you want something more blonde yeah, and voluptuous. Yeah. Yeah, um... It's kind of similar to this one, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell that Cindy was just so happy and it truly brightened my day. This is number two. Ooh, this one's flirty. Makes me want to um, sing a Gwen Stefani song. Yes. <laughs> Don't speak. I, I know, know what, what you're thinking. thinking. <laughs> I feel like I know which one you're going to get. This is number three. I Thank like you this for one. being a friend. <laughs> Travel down the road and back again. I love this one. It looks very natural on you. It fits, yeah, it does. It's it fits my, you. My skin color. Yes. No, I'm going to do that other one. Yeah, right? no. The longer silver. The, the, yeah. This. Great, great. She's, yeah, yeah, she wants this one. Yeah, yeah one. this one's one she likes. Now wear it out. Thank you. Stunning, yes. She's a model. new again. I love it. Yeah. You look gorgeous. Everyone is going to be so happy that you're safe. Because last we had heard of you, you were in Boston. What made you want to go there? I was under the uh, false assumed assumption that my soon to be fian my fiance was having a heart surgery and I was going to be there to be his caregiver. You say your fiance, so he is still your fiance? Uh, no. I don't know what he is now. So you get to Boston and you get off the plane and I'm assuming you try to reach him and he doesn't answer? Right, yes, correct. I spent the first two nights still hopeful in hotel rooms, but by doing so I spent a lot of my money on two nights in a hotel because I thought I was going to be there two or three nights. His absence made it obvious that he was not going to respond and I was stuck there for about six weeks. So when you got to Boston and he wasn't there, were you surprised or were you at that point just like, here I go again? Devastated, yeah. Angry at my own stupidity, realizing that everything that I believed in for the last two years was not real. You came back to LA and you were back on the streets, right? Yeah. How was that? It was harder because it was different weather now. It's getting cold here. Oh my gosh, some of those nights are freezing out there. And I didn't want a tent. I thought a tent would be too permanent. I finally got a place about six days ago, five or six days ago. It's in Glendale, which is kind of far, but at least I have a roof right now. It's a homeless shelter, right? Yeah. And you have a permanent bed there, though. Yes. <laughs> up to two, up to 60 days I have a bed assigned to me. You know, it was really hard adjustment the first couple of nights. I still haven't slept in the last five or, night, five or six nights. You haven't slept? Yeah, not much. Why? It's very tight quarters, and there's a woman next to me who snores very loudly all night. And there's a woman on the other side of me who has a, a four or five-year-old son who, you know, makes a lot of noise all night. Have you tried headphones? I mean, uh, earplugs? I tried earbuds yesterday, and they didn't do any difference at all. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet tonight. What do you mean? Are you contemplating sleeping outside instead of going uh, back? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, do you prefer sleeping outside than sleeping at the shelter? Mm, I wouldn't say that, because I like having hot water. I like having a bathroom available. I like having electricity available. I have no privacy, but at least I have, you know, a roof from the wind. And if it's raining, I'm inside. So, you know, things happen for a reason and things change when they change. A couple of people have messaged me saying that they knew you from your hometown and that your sister had offered you a place to stay and you left there correct. to come back to LA. Yes, that's correct. I love her. She knows I love her. Um, I didn't know that Hobart, Indiana had no public transportation and it's very spread out. I had no access to a vehicle. They wouldn't call me Cindy. They called me by my, my boy name. And it just didn't feel right. It felt like I was living with my parents. How does your sister handle that? Or how is your family handling that? Um, she understands that I had to do what I, ha what I had to do. And she's okay. So in terms of money right now, you're getting your checks, Social Security checks, right? Yeah, they're coming in. Um, I'm going to try to get an apartment. Hopefully by January I'll be able to get at least a, a, a roommate kind of situation. So it's not like I'm broke. I just have to find the right situation to move into. 
So financially speaking, you have money in the bank. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're not giving any away to your fiance or to other guys right now, right? I'm not, correct. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. You told me in the car that someone from Texas is maybe coming tonight to see you. Yeah, that's correct. Who is this? It's a person from the past that I don't know if I'm ready to let back into my life or not. Is it someone, one of the, one of the people that have been taking your money? Cindy. Oh, no. Have you met the person in real life? No. No. You, 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 can't, you can't do this. All right, I won't. I have not done it yet. Because this person is not real. I know, I know. Thank you for telling me that. No, I hate telling you that. No, but you have to. And because you are special. And you can find somebody. There's somebody in real life that will, that, that will like you for who you are. You know that, right? Do you? Yes. I, I promise there is. Like it, 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 it hurts me to know that I don't want you to fall into that trap again. No, I know. Me too. Me too. Me too. It's a loneliness, I think. The loneliness. The disparity of being homeless and everything. The thought of having somebody finding a, a partner at least to do things with, to make things better with. That's it. That's what it is. I think that a lot of the reason why the audience feels for you so much is because we all have those feelings and those worries of feeling lonely and alone and wanting someone to be with us. That's true, I agree. Do you have people in your life that are telling you stop talking to this person, it's not real? Yeah, many. I don't talk about it to anybody. Because you know what they're going to say. Exactly, yes. So at this shelter you're at, do they offer therapists and that kind of stuff too to talk with you? I've talked about that, yes, but I haven't got anywhere with it yet. Do you want that though? I'd love it, yeah. I'd love it. Absolutely. I'm just trying to keep a positive attitude and hope that things will work out to the best. I, I really hope that too. And I'm just so, so happy that you're safe and here. And it just feels so good to see you. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. I really think about you a lot. Oh, Matt, thank you. I love my new hair, my new Christmas gift. Thank you, Matt. Yes, it's gorgeous. It is beautiful. So I want to thank everybody who, you know, reaches out to me. I get some Facebook notices and stuff, and it really makes a lot of me. So thank you. You're a warm, open-hearted person, and sometimes I think that's to your detriment, and that 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 sure. that makes you get in situations that you shouldn't be in. But well, yep. But I also think that's such a beautiful part of you that I don't want you to lose. You know, so love is possible for you, and I think love will happen for you with the right person. Thank you. I hope so. I, I hope you feel that you have someone in your corner that's fighting for you. I do. I do. Thank you so much. Make sure everything you got everything you need. All right, thank Cindy. you for everything. Thank you for the hair. What a nice horse. Always here for you. All right, yeah. so much love for you. Of course. You mean the world to me. You do too. You mean the world to me too. Thank you. All right, have fun All today. Right. Have a happy holiday, okay? All right, thank you. We'll keep in touch. Okay. Mm-hmm.